In this video, we're going to talk more about the behavior of the graph of a polynomial function and specifically focus on the end behavior of the graph of a polynomial function. So before we graph polynomial functions, we are going to examine the graph of basic polynomial functions, which are of the form p of x equals x to the n. And this is an example of a power function. A power function is a function of the form p of x equals a x to the n, where a and n are real numbers. Now remember with polynomial functions, our n value is a whole number, so these are kind of a subsection of power functions. And what I want to look at first are the graphs of these basic power functions that have just a coefficient of 1, leading coefficient of 1, and the degree is odd. So we'll look at y equals x, y equals x cubed, and y equals x to the 5. So notice the y equals x is a line whose y-intercept is 0, the slope is 1, so it goes up 1 over 1, and so on. Y equals x cubed was one of those basic functions that we studied back in section 11. So it goes through the origin. It goes through the points 1, 1, 2, 8, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 8. And then y equals x to the 5 also goes through the origin. It goes through 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. But it would go through the point 2, 32, and negative 2, negative 32. But notice that there are some similarities. First of all, the domain and range for all three of those graphs is a set of all real numbers. And the graphs behave in a similar fashion at their ends. That is, notice that as we go to the right on each of these graphs, the graph is going up. And that's because the y values are increasing on to infinity. And as we go to the left on each of these graphs, the graphs are going down. So the graphs are all in this form. They go up to the right and down to the left. And the way we say this in arrow notation is we say as x goes to infinity, so as x goes to infinity, that represents as we're going to the right y goes to infinity, and that represents that we're going up. And then as x goes to negative infinity, well, that represents our left part of our graph. y is going to negative infinity, which represents that the graph is going down. And then if we look at the opposite of those three functions, so y equals negative x, y equals negative x cubed, y equals negative x to the 5. Those are just reflections of the previous graphs across the x-axis. And so now the graphs are going in the opposite directions. The domain and range is still the set of all real numbers. But notice how the behavior changes now when we have a negative leading coefficient and the degree is odd. So now as we go to the right in each of these graphs, the graph is going down. And as we go to the left, what's happening? The graphs are going up. So in summary, we know that as we go to the right, the graph goes down. And as we go to the left, the graph goes up. In arrow notation, this is as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity, right? So that's representing the downward motion. And as x goes to negative infinity, which is the left part of our graph, the graph is going up, or y is going to infinity. Okay, so as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, that's just referring to the left or right part of the graph. And if the graph is going up, then we say y goes to infinity. If the graph goes down, we say y goes to negative infinity. So in summary, the graphs of p of x equals x to the n and p of x equals negative x to the n, where n is an odd whole number, we know this, that the graphs get flatter through the intercept, that is through 0, 0, and vertically steeper as the exponent increases. 
The domain and range of these functions is the set of all real numbers, and it would also add that the end behavior, that is on the ends of the graph, there is doing opposite things. Now we'll examine the graphs of y equals x to to the second or x squared, y equals x to the four, y equals x to the six. So no, notice here that we have even degrees and our coefficient is one. Well, y equals x squared is a graph of that basic parabola that we've talked about. It has a vertex at zero, zero, goes through one, one, two, four, negative one, one, and negative two, four. Y equals x to the four goes through zero, zero, one, one, 2, 16, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 16. And the graph of y equals x to the 6 goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, but 2, 64, and negative 2, 64. So notice that as our exponent is increasing, these graphs are getting steeper as the exponents increase. And they're all going through the point zero, zero. The domain is the set of all real numbers for these graphs. The range is from bottom up, bracket zero to infinity. And what about the end behavior? So notice that they're all doing similar things on the ends. As we go to the right end of our graphs, notice that the graph is going up. And also as we go to the left end of our graph, the graph is going up. So we can say, we can state this in arrow notation as x goes to infinity, so that is as we're going to the right, y goes to infinity, that means we're going up. And as x goes to negative infinity, which is going to the left, y goes to infinity, which is y is going up. We'll look now at the reflections, or the opposite of those functions. y equals negative x squared, y equals negative x to the four, y equals negative x to the six. These graphs are reflections across the x-axis of the previous graphs. The domain of these functions is a set of all real numbers, and the range from bottom up is negative infinity to zero with a bracket. So in this case, notice that on each end of the graph, the graphs are going down. So the right end and the left end goes down. We can state it like this in arrow notation. As x goes to infinity, so that is as x goes to the right, y is going to negative infinity, which means that we are going down. And as x goes to negative infinity, that's to the left side of our graph. The graph is going down, which tells us y is going to negative infinity. So in summary, when we have p of x equals x to the n, and p of x equals negative x to the n, where n is an even whole number, the graphs are similar. The graph gets flatter through that intercept of 0, 0, and vertically steeper as the exponent increases. The domain for all those functions is all real numbers, and the range will either be negative infinity to zero or zero to infinity. So at its ends, the graph of a polynomial function actually resembles the graph of the basic polynomial function or this basic power function, whose degree has the same parity, that means even or odd, and whose leading coefficient has the same sign. So knowing the degree and leading coefficient of a polynomial function enables us to predict the end behavior of the graph of any polynomial function. So I have on the screen two polynomial functions. One is f of x equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 4. And the other is f of x equals 3x squared. And what I really want to focus on on these two graphs is that both of them start in the third quadrant and they both end in the first quadrant. So that is on its ends, the graphs are doing the same thing. It is going 
down to the left and up to the right. And that is because of this leading term, 3x cubed. It has an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, which will tell us exactly what the graph will do at its ends. And so I have a summary chart, and this is called the leading coefficient test. But there's a chart here that actually describes the end behavior of a polynomial function based on its degree n and whether or not it's even or odd, and the sign of its leading coefficient a sub n. So if n is odd, and the sign of the leading coefficient is positive, then the graph will go down to the left and up to the right. So that is as x goes to negative infinity, y will go to negative infinity. And as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. If n is odd, but the coefficient is negative, then it's going to go up to the left and down to the right. Remember that reflection. And if, honestly, if you think about the basic odd functions like y equals x or y equals x cubed, you know how the graph of y equals x looks like. And so that can help you remember which direction it goes to the left and right. And then the opposite of that is going to have to reflect across the x-axis. And then if n is even and a sub n is positive, then the graph will go up to the left. So that is y goes to infinity when x goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So the graph goes up to the right. And again, think about the basic, um, like x squared, that probably goes up to the left and right to help you remember this case. And then if n is even and a sub n is negative, then it's going to reflect across and they will both go down at its ends. So that means as x goes to negative infinity or to the left, y goes to negative infinity or down. As x goes to infinity or to the right, the graph will go down, so y goes to negative infinity there. The way I like to always remember it is whatever sign the leading coefficient has, it's going to end that way. So on the right side, it will end in that way. So if the sign is positive, it's going to end going up. And if it's negative, it will end going down. And then just remember, if it's odd, it does the opposite at its ends. And if it's even, it does the same. So as long as you remember one direction and what even and odd does, you can get this whole table. And so here's a different way to illustrate it. The leading coefficient test with odd degree polynomial functions with a positive leading coefficient, just like we said before, it goes down to the left and up to the right. A negative leading coefficient goes up to the left and down to the right. And if it's an even degree, a positive leading coefficient, it goes up on its ends in each direction. And a negative leading coefficient will go down on its ends to the left and right. So we have an example where we want to determine the end behavior of each polynomial function. And our first function is p of x equals 3x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 3. So the first thing I need to do is understand that the degree and leading coefficient is what determines that end behavior. So I need to find that information here. And this is in standard form. It's already expanded. So the degree is the largest exponent 4. And the leading coefficient is 3. So we need to remember that 4 is an even number, and 3 is a positive coefficient. And so the end behavior will be the result of those two things. Since it's positive leading coefficient, we know it's going to end going up. Because the degree is even, it's going to do the same thing on the other side, which means it's going to go up to the left and up to the right. And if you wanted to write that in arrow notation, that would mean as x goes to negative infinity, which is to the left, y is going up, which is to infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, which is to the right, 
y is going to positive infinity or going up. Then we have p of x equals 4x to the 4 times 3 minus 2x all squared times x plus 1. This one is not in standard form. It's in factored form, so we need to think about what the expansion would look like. And remember that that is based only on the leading term of each of these factors. So we have 4x to the 4. When we square this 3 minus 2x, the main thing I need to worry about is to square this negative 2x, which would be plus 4x squared. And then in the other factor, x plus 1, x is our leading term, and there's no exponent to apply to it. So whenever I multiply these leading terms, 4x to the 4 times 4x squared times x, we get 16x to the 7. So the degree is 7, and the leading coefficient is 16. And so 7 is our degree. That is an odd number. The leading coefficient 16 is positive. So with the leading coefficient being positive, we know it will end going up to the right. But because it's an odd degree, it's going to do the opposite on the other end, which means it will go down. So it goes down to the left and up to the right. So in arrow notation, as we go to the left, so as x goes to negative infinity, the graph goes down, which means that y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to the right, or that is to infinity, the graph goes up, which means y goes to positive infinity.